And welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and this is my second installment of cards that I think should be commanders. So if you didn't watch the first video, basically what this is, is this is creatures that I think should both be legendary, but are also cards that I think would make interesting build arounds as a commander. So basically there's two prerequisites here. The first prerequisite being it's a card that just to me feels like a legendary card. You know, I, I think that easily could be errated to be a, a legendary creature, which of course then would qualify it to be a commander. And the other criteria is that I would just like it to be a card that I think would make an interesting build around as a commander. You know, I had some people suggest Dream Trawler or Quartzwood Crasher in, in the last video that they would make great commanders. I think they would make interesting build arounds, sure, but those don't feel like legendary creatures to me at all. So for me, I want creatures that I think actually feel like legendary creatures and then also would make for an interesting commander. So starting out this time with the wretched, I think I said in the last video about how if a card starts with the, I really think it should be legendary. The typically means there's only one of them, right? So the wretched, three black, black, five mana demon, two, five at the end of combat. Gain control of all creatures blocking the Wretched for as long as you control the Wretched. So, really interesting build around here. I mean, it's going to be a mono black deck where you're gaining control of your opponent's creatures. Obviously, you're going to want your commander to... You're going to want to force blocks here. So, Magnetic Web, a personal favorite of mine. You know, I love that card because it's just great for sort of the combat manipulation things in colors that don't typically do that, like this. Nemesis Mask is another one that can do that. Also probably going to want to make your commander indestructible or, or you know, the, the fact that someone can just block it and kill it isn't going to be very useful, right? Because you have to keep your commander on the board. So giving it a dark steel plate or something like that would also be really helpful. And then probably you want sack outlets too, right? As soon as you lose control of your commander, so it can be bounced, whatever, you're going to want to be able to sacrifice the creatures that you've stolen so that your opponents don't get them back, right? So just a lot of directions you can go here. I think it's very interesting. Next up at number nine, Joda's Avenger. And of course, just like I said with Urza's Avenger, it, it just feels like it's Joda's Joda's Avenger, right? Joda obviously being the legendary creature that already exists. This is his Avenger. I mean, how many Avengers does he have? I would think he only has one, right? So Joda's Avenger is six mana, five and a blue, shapeshifter, four, four, and it has a one of these zero mana abilities until end of turn. Joda's Avenger gets minus one, minus one, and your choice of double strike, protection from red, vigilance, or shadow. So very similar to Urza's Avenger, where you can give it a whole bunch of these abilities all at once. Like you can give it up to three of these abilities without killing it. And these abilities I find are a lot better. I mean, double strike, we all know that's really good. Shadow essentially makes it unblockable, which is great if you're going to play sort of a Voltron strategy, which I think this probably would. You know, mono blue Voltron, very interesting. The protection from red, though, is really the interesting one, right? Obviously, you could just put a Painter Servant in this deck and make everything red, and now your commander has protection from everything. You even could do the color manipulation thing, which blue does really, really well. You can change the text on this card to read protection from another color if you want. You know, if you've got a whole bunch of people in your play group that play green or black or whatever. So again, just a lot of interesting ways that I think you can go with this. I think it would make an interesting build around. Coming in at number eight, Teferi's Imp. And I, I think, you know, you can sort of see a little bit of a theme here. I went with, you know, a legendary creature that already exists that has like a pet or an imp or an avenger or something like that. I thought cards like that to me, like this guy, and even if you look at the art, this just seems like Teferi's, you know, it's his thing. It's his little monkey with wings, whatever that's supposed to be, that sort of hangs out with him and, and goes and delivers messages with his tail or whatever he's supposed to be doing. And also I think would make a really interesting build around, right? So two and a blue. Imp, one, one, it's got flying and phasing. So it's a phasing commander. When Teferi's Imp phases out, discard a card. When Teferi's Imp phases in, draw a card. You know, it's basically looting on your commander, which I think is interesting. So you can go around the phasing theme, right? There's a couple different directions you can go here, which is what I think makes for an interesting commander. You can definitely use the phasing thing. There's definitely a theme there. Also, you're looting, right? You're discarding and drawing as your commander phases in and out. So you can use madness. You can use draw effects like Chasm Skulker, where wherever you draw a card, because on every other turn you're going to be drawing an extra card right so you can go with effects like that as well coming in at number seven Gaia's liege 
three green 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 six mana avatar this one i mean man how is this not a legendary creature right i, I don't know it's an avatar it's gaia's liege right look at the picture the picture just looks like some guy that definitely looks like a legendary creature to me as long as gaia's liege isn't attacking its power and toughness are each equal to the number of forests you control as long as gaia's liege is attacking its power and toughness are each equal to the number of forests defending player controls so basically when it's attacking its power and toughness is equal to you know you say your opponent's got five forests so it's going to be a five five when it's not attacking, you have eight forests, so it's going to be an 8-8. Eight, eight. Definitely makes, you know, for an interesting build around. But the last ability here, tap target land becomes a forest until Gaia's Liege leaves the battlefield. Also very interesting, very unique. You don't see that on um, a lot of cards in general. Uh, definitely don't see it on any commanders. I just think there's a lot of directions you could go with this. And quite frankly, I'm not sure what, but turning your opponent's lands into forest, obviously forest walk creatures are gonna work great in this deck, right? So maybe you can go that route. I probably don't think you wanna be actually attacking with your commander a lot here um, unless your opponent has a ton of forests more than you right which is not going to happen a lot since you're playing a mono green deck i think more than likely what you want to be doing here is playing a lot of forest walk creatures probably and then getting lots of you know or and frost fang and creatures like that that are going to get you benefits from connecting coming in at number six drow news pet one blue blue shapeshifter two two it has kicker Two and a black, discard a creature card. Okay, so already we're in all sorts of new territory here. It's a Demir commander, right? If this was a, a legendary creature, it would be a Demir commander. And it has kicker. And it's not the only commander that has kicker. There are a few. A very interesting kicker, though. Discard a creature card. So... In Demir Colors, obviously there's a lot of ways you can use that. If Drowlnew's pet was kicked, it enters the battlefield with flying and has X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is the discarded card's mana value. Oof. So again, I can go, there's, there's some directions I can go. I think the most obvious direction to go here is I discard my super expensive creature, uh, get a ton of counters on my commander, and then I reanimate that creature, right? I cast a reanimate and get that super expensive creature out of the graveyard i mean it's six mana that that would be i guess the only downside here is if you are paying the kicker which you probably would i mean if you're not paying the kicker this is just uh what a vanilla tutu right for three mana that's no good so you really have to pay the kicker so that's going to end up being six mana that's kind of a lot but still i i think i discard a huge creature into my graveyard and then reanimate it I have a huge flying commander. So it would be sort of Voltron-y a little bit, but also a reanimator deck at the same time. Coming in at number five, Deathbringer Liege. And there are a few of these, okay? There's an actual cycle of these in all of the different color pairings. This is the one that I thought would be the most interesting build around. Just feels like a legendary creature to me. And especially with the very unique and interesting abilities, right? So it's five mana, two, and then three hybrid black and white mana. Horror, three, four. Other white creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Other black creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So right away already, that's pretty good for building around. But the other abilities obviously are really where you want to go, I think. Whenever you cast a white spell, you may tap target creature. Whenever you cast a black spell, you may destroy target creature if it's tapped. So if you cast a black and white spell, so say I cast a, a vanishing verse, right? Those last two abilities will both trigger at the same time, and I just stack them so that if there's no tapped creature on the board already that I want to kill... The, the white part will resolve first and I can tap a creature and then the black part resolves after and then I can destroy that creature. So it just becomes whenever I cast a black and white spell, I can destroy a creature. That's pretty darn good. Um, you can even go with the direction of, you know, like there's lots of stuff in white that taps creatures down so you can even do that so just tap a bunch of people's creatures down uh, and then when you cast a black spell you can kill them even in black royal assassin famously is probably the, the best example destroys tapped creatures so i can just cast a white spell tap a creature down then destroy it with my royal assassin i really think this would make a great build around coming in at number four garelf's masterpiece and again i mean how many masterpieces does garelf have i mean he's i would imagine he's only got one I mean, how many masterpieces can you have? This feels like it's the only one. So three blue, blue, zombie horror, seven, seven, flying. Grelf's masterpiece gets minus one, minus one for each card in your hand. 
And then you can pay three in a blue and discard three cards return Gross Masterpiece from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So right away, obviously, like this is a zombie, so that's significant. Obviously, you want to be doing a lot of graveyard stuff as well. However, this is mono blue. This is a mono blue commander. So doing zombie stuff and doing graveyard stuff in mono blue isn't as great as if you had black. But again, I like the challenge. For me, I don't want things that are super obvious. I want things that are gonna be a little challenging and how am I gonna build around it? I think there's a really some really interesting ways you can go with this, right? It wants your hand to be empty. It's a five mana, seven, seven flyer. All right, and as we all know, seven power is really important in commander because that means three attacks and you can kill your opponent, right? Because that's 21 commander damage. So being a seven, seven flyer is really significant. It essentially puts it on the same level as the original Elder Dragons for which this format is named, right? And that's why, for anyone who doesn't know, that's why you have 21 commander damage because it's three hits from one of the original Elder Dragons. And I just like that you have to build around having less cards in your hand. You can discard cards. Again, you can use the madness theme if you want. Not having to recast your commander when it dies is pretty sweet too, right? You can just return it from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Maybe we throw a river kelpie in this deck, right? So we can draw cards every time we return our commander to the battlefield. So I, I think there's a lot of ways you can go with this. Pretty interesting. Next up, Bringer of the White Dawn. And again, this is a series of cards for anyone who doesn't know. It came out in Fifth Dawn. There's one for each color. I thought Bringer of the White Dawn was the more interesting one. I didn't want to talk about all of them. I think the green one's pretty boring. It just makes a beast token. The red one steals a creature. I mean, I guess that's okay. That could actually make an interesting build around. The blue and the black one are just busted. I mean, the blue one, you just draw two cards, <laughs> extra cards every turn. And the black one is a tutor. If I mean, these are five color commanders, right? They have those pips on the in the description. So they would all be five color commanders and having the bringer of the black, I mean, the bringer black dawn was actually a legendary creature. It probably would usurp Golos as the most popular commander in the entire format because it's a card that you can just do anything with. It's five colors. I can play every color and I get to tutor every turn. Doesn't get much better than that, right? Bringer of the White Dawn is the one that I think is the most interesting. And I guess, you know, if I'm advocating for Bringer of the White Dawn to be a legendary creature, then I guess the black one would have to be too. So, I mean, be careful what you wish for, I guess. Again, it's a five color commander, right? You may pay Wooburg rather than pay Bringer of the White Dawn's mana cost, which you're always going to do, right? The normal casting cost is seven white white, right? Nine mana. That's pretty ridiculous, right? You're never going to want to do that. Paying five mana is much better and you're going to get a five five bringer and again that's why these feel legendary to me i mean just the name bringer of the white dawn that really feels legendary and these are as far as i know the only bringers other than changelings in the entire game the only creature type that has bringer are this one cycle of cards from fifth dawn so that seems very legendary to me i don't know anyway other than that it's a 5-5 with Trample, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you may return an artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Obviously, there's a lot of directions you can go with that. I just think that this would make a really fun commander because now I can sort of culminate all of the artifact decks out there. Like, you got an Oscar deck. Basically, all the things you're doing in your Oscar deck, you can put in here. You can throw Oscar in this deck, obviously. He would be great in a deck like this. And then a bunch of the things you're doing there, your Shroom deck, whatever you're doing in there, right? So now I have an Esper artifact deck. I'm going to throw that stuff in there. You have a mono blue artifact deck. You can throw that stuff in here, right? And I don't love five color commanders for this reason, because you can just sort of envelop everything else. But it is sort of limiting on what you're doing, right? You're returning an artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So I just think that would make for an interesting build around. Coming in at number two, Liege of the Hollows. And again, I how is this not? I, I don't know. This just really feels feels like a legendary creature to me especially the art like I, I look at the art too and the art to me just screams legendary I, I don't know so two green green spirit three four when liege of the hollows dies each player may pay any amount of mana then each player creates a number of 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature tokens equal to the amount of mana they paid this way. That's right, squirrel tokens. Probably a lot of people don't even know this card exists. It is a... Man, like I don't even need to say anything. 
Do I? Do I even need to say anything? What an interesting deck this would make. And no, I don't think it would be a hug deck. Yes, you could go that route. You could make, I guess, a mono green hug deck and just let everyone go nuts and make a bunch of squirrels. I guess that would make for an interesting game. You could go Squirrel Tribal. Obviously, Squirrel Tribal would be the way to go with this. I think there's a lot of other ways you could go too. You know, there's a lot of cards out there that you can play in a mono green deck that will give like minus one, minus O oh to attacking creatures and stuff. So you're not going to get hurt by all the squirrel tokens other people are getting, right? So I think you can go that direction. It's each player pays any amount of mana. So obviously you can just do this where I have a sack outlet, wait till all my opponents are tapped out, sacrifice it, you know, and then I do it. And so I get all the squirrel tokens. Nobody else does. It would be really easy to just make a mono green deck where I ramp, 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 and then sack my Liege of the Hollows and, and just make a zillion squirrel tokens and run everybody over with a squirrel stampede. Definitely would make an interesting commander, I think, for sure. And coming in at number one today is Lim Duel's Paladin. And man, someone mentioned this in the comments of my last video. And I'm like, oh, how did I miss that? Definitely, this feels like a legendary creature. Again, if you look at the art, it's Lim Duel's Paladin. It just seems like his, what, right-hand man or something? Or, or like his minion that goes around doing his bidding or something? Black, red, Rakdos, Paladin, which is very unique. So it's two black and a red human knight. There actually is no creature type paladin anymore. Although the D&D set's coming out. So now I'm wondering if they're going to switch that back. You know, stay tuned because for anyone who hasn't played D&D, there is paladins in D&D. So maybe they're going to bring that creature type back. Who knows? If that's the case, they'll have to re errata this back to being a paladin. So it is an O3 with trample. Okay, well, that's kind of unique, right? At the beginning of your upkeep, you may discard a card. Okay, you may discard a card. If you don't, sacrifice Limb Duel's Paladin and draw a card. Okay, so already there's so much stuff going on here. So now, again, we can do the discard theme if we want, right? So cards we want in our graveyard, we pitch them in our graveyard. If we don't, we can sacrifice them. Okay, so now maybe we want to sacrifice our commander and we get to draw a card, so he replaces himself. That's pretty good too. Continuing on though, whenever Limb Duel's Paladin becomes blocked, it gets plus six, plus three until end of turn, okay? So now the O3 Trample makes a little bit more sense, right? So whenever your Limb Duel's Paladin attacks, if it becomes blocked, it becomes a 6-6. Six, six. So if it gets blocked by a 1-1, one, one, you know, that doesn't make a lot of sense for your opponents because now it becomes a 6-6 six, six and it's going to trample over for 5 damage, right? However, whenever Limb Duel's Paladin attacks and isn't blocked, it assigns no combat damage this turn and defending player loses 4 life. You know, there's just so much going on here that I just think this would be an insane build around that you could go so many directions with. You're discarding, you're sacrificing, you're drawing. The fact that maybe you want it to be blocked so it gets bigger. You can even do a Stryonic Resonator where if someone blocks it, you can copy that triggered ability. And now it's going to get plus six, plus three doubled. So now it gets what? Plus 12, plus six. So now it's a 12, nine. So th that's another way you can go with it. This card I actually think fits in an Alicia deck. I made an Alicia. One of the first decks I ever made in Commander was an Alicia deck. And I put this in it because Alicia can get this guy out of the graveyard and when he attacks, again, your opponent's going to either lose four life or it's, he's going to block it and it's going to become a 6-6 six, six with Trample. So it's sort of a win-win. As a commander though, man, what an interesting build around, I think. I think there's just a lot of different ways you can go with this just because there's so much going on. So that is the list for today. However, just like in a lot of my videos lately, you know, I'm loving this poll thing and I'm going to start doing it for all my videos. I'm going to make one of these decks and I'm going to make one of the decks from the first video, okay? And I know people are going to say, well, how are you going to make one of these decks? These aren't actually legendary creatures. People can do whatever they want, all right? I said it in the last video, okay? This is the format, you guys. And I hear all these people commenting in my videos, these rules lawyers are like, you can't do this or that or like whatever. Like, I'll, this is the format. It's a casual format. It's kitchen table magic. You know, as long as your play group's okay with it, you can do whatever you like, all right? I've had lots of people tell me that they have commanders that are all over the damn place. I myself myself have made an Ink Treader Nephilim deck in the past. I tell people all the time to put Inspiring Commander in their Commander decks because White really needs the card draw help, even though that technically isn't a legal card in Commander or whatever. It's a magic card, okay? There is tons and tons of people out there, myself included, making 
commander cards, making legendary creatures that Wizards of the Coast has nothing to do with, okay? So people are all over the map when it comes to stuff like this. So talk to your play group, okay? If you're interested in one of the commanders, one of the creatures anyway, from this list, and you want to see me make a deck out of it, or the last list, right? The first list I did, go check out that video. I got 10 more creatures there. I'm going to make a poll for each of those videos, and I'm going to make a deck for each of those videos, right? We're going to have a poll for each. You guys go vote. Whichever one gets the most vote in each video, I will actually make a deck tech and a deck list for. Again, like I said in the last video, if someone sits across the table from me and they have a Limb Duel Paladin deck or a Legion of the Hollows deck, like, go for it, man. I'm all for that kind of stuff. So let me know what you guys want me to make. But that is it for today, and thanks for tuning in. 